Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today we will be attempting to implement a, a new component in the Material UI version 4. And actually this is not a new component by itself, but it is listed as such in the documentation. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, we just have some other components put together to kind of create this transfer list. And uh, if you're experienced with Material UI, you will quickly be able to see that we are using uh, the paper components, some checkboxes, and some buttons here. And uh, I'm going to be using a different implementation than the one in the documentation, just to show you guys another, um, another way of doing it, basically. All right. Um, Let's get right to it. So let's just start off by implementing or importing the different uh, components we need. So we need a button, paper, checkbox uh, inside our transfer list here. If we are going to use the one in the example, we will be needing a list and inside that list some list items. And also we can make use of grid just to kind of lay out everything very nicely here. All right, these are the components we need. Um, right, so let's create a function to generate some items since we need some items to get going, right? Uh, so let's just make a simple loop here where we are uh, basically loops through eight times to generate some dummy data here. And uh, I want to push a object with a name and that name will just be item plus the index and then a um, variable that kind of says what in what box am I. So that would be, let's just put everything in the first box. That would be box zero. And then a selected property that says whether this one is currently selected, whether we currently has it checked. All right, it looks great. Let's now return our items. And now we can go into our main component here, our function, our app component, sorry. And Right out of the bat, we need some state here. We need all our items. So let's just use, let's just call this state items. And we're going to use use state. And we're going to initialize it to generate items, the function we just made. All right. So to begin with, now where we have our state, I just want to create the markup that we have. And this markup is actually pretty simple, I suppose, pretty simple. Um, as you can see, we generate this paper with some checkboxes twice. So we can do something clever here and make a function to render that one out so we don't have to repeat ourselves too much. So let's create a function here. Let's just call it generate, let's just call it generate markup. That name is not too great, but it will do for now. So in here, we are expecting to get some items, the different list items that are in this box. And then we need to generate some markup. So we need to return a paper. And inside this paper, we have a list. And inside this list, we have some list items and uh, depending on how many items we pass to this function. Uh, yeah, the amount of items we pass uh, to this um, function, the more we need to render. So we need to map over these items. And then for each item, we want to render a list item like that. And each list item has a checkbox. And let's just put in a space here with the name so item dot name so you remember up here we uh, pushed some objects into this items array and to get the name yeah 
we just access the name like that dot name okay general markup is done so let's go down to our return function here inside app so let's make the main layout here so we need a grid and there needs to be a container inside here we have three grid items and the first two will fill around five let's just say five and then we have one in the middle as well that won't fill up as much space maybe let's put two there inside here we will have our first uh, call of our generate marga function so let's put it in here oh sorry generate markup and here we want the left side so we don't know what the left side is yet but we're gonna figure that out soon and in this other grid we have our right side generate markup put in the right side here okay cool in the middle we have as you can see four buttons four buttons here um, I'm just going to create two of them just to make kind of a simple version. So in addition to being an item, we also need to make sure that this grid item is actually also a container. And we need to change the direction to column. Right? Let's put in our two buttons. One button is facing to the right and the other button is facing to the left like this oh okay uh now i actually wrote quite a lot of code so maybe let's try to see what we got let's see what we got so i'm gonna save and then switch tab over here okay so we get an error because we didn't define the left side and the right side yet so just to get some kind of markup going, I'm just gonna define these two variables to an empty into array. All right, uh, so far so good. Uh, since left side and right side both are empty, we are not generating any list items. And our button, well, our button seems to be there and yeah it seems good so far so let's get to that left side right so how do we calculate that well very easy actually so we need to kind of loop through our items right and uh, i have chosen to use a reduce function to do that a reduce function that returns a an array with well an array of size two. So left side, right side. And uh, I'm gonna call items.reduce. And I have an accumulator. I, I didn't pronounce that one right. And a current item, all right? So how to decide if it's left side? Well, if it's left side, it's inside box number zero. Let's just call it zero. And if it's inside right side, it's inside box one. So we can actually do this on one line. So if current.box is equal to, uh, let's just say zero, then we want to push, oh, we want to go to index zero and push on um, our current item. Otherwise, we want to go to index one and push on our current item. And then return our accumulator. I don't know, I don't know how to say this, but basically this item that I'm actually about to define here. So that would be our two dimensional array, or our array of size two, where on each slot we have another array so it's basically two arrays within one array right this looks pretty good if you say that 
we get a list. We do get a list here. Everyone is on the left side, and that makes sense because when we define our data here, I put everyone in box zero. So that's great. Now we need to do some specific stuff here. So we need to be able to, when I'm clicking these items, I need to mark them as selected. Right now we do not have a event handler for doing this. So let's define that one. Let's call it handle checkbox change. So what I get here is an item, right? And um, I'm gonna want to be looking for this item inside our items array. So let's say index items find index and I'm looking for item. This will give the index of the item that I selected. Now I need to go to that index, but before doing that, we need to make sure we just make a copy. So I'm just gonna make a copy of our items array. And then I'm gonna access this new copy and that index and the selected property, I'm basically just gonna invert that. So whatever is there, I'm gonna invert it. So if it's checked, it will be non-checked and the other way around. And then we need to set items to our new items. Okay, now let's attach this handler. To our checkbox here. So on change, put in the handler and make sure we pass the item into that handler so we know which item to look for and since we uh, yeah since we now made this a stateful checkbox we should also add checked so it knows whether it will show it as checked or not like that Okay, let's give it a go. It seems like it's working. We don't know actually if it's working because we can also do this if it's stateless. So let's define the last bit of functionality, which is gonna be, uh, let me just make this terminal a little smaller. It's very big. I should have done that earlier. Okay, let's uh, make uh, the last bit of functionality here, which, which will be clicking these arrows so let's just make two new function, functions. One is called move right and the other one called move left. And as you can imagine, these functions are gonna be doing very similar things. But I'm just gonna define two different ones. Move left, move right. Okay, so basically, what we need to do here is we need to be mapping all our items. And we want to check what box the item is in. If the box is on the left side here, on box zero, and it's selected, we want to change the box to box one, okay? So let's make a copy and then override box and check. Um, actually, we just kind of want to check if it's selected and then change it. So if item does selected, if it's selected, we want to change the box to one because we're moving right. And if it's not, we just want to leave it wherever it is. And that's actually all. Now we have our new items array. So we can put that into set items and whoop to do, we have our new array of items. And uh, down here we don't want to do this same thing. Actually, 
But just switch this one around. Cause we're moving it to the left. You want to move it to the left box if it's selected. If we press save now, I hope to God it works. Let's try here. So selecting these two, pressing the right button and bam, it just works. Let's try here. Oh, it works. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Uh, last thing we can do here is if we want it to look more like the no, example here, we can center these two arrows very easily. Just uh, adding another property to our grid here, our grid container, which is also an item. We can just say align items center. And that should be all. See if it works. Uh, didn't seem like it worked actually. Let me see. Yeah. Maybe it's on the other axis. Let's try justify here. Okay, that's better. That works. Yeah, now it will stay actually in the center of the looks of it. Yeah, okay. That may not be the best layout, but you can fill around with the layout and choose which one you like. I think the best um, solution is probably to uh, set a specific height and then make these, uh, these um, lists scrollable. So you don't get like an infinite list and then these can always be centered and not move around. That would be the best option here. Okay, yeah, that's all guys. That's all I want to show you for this time, how to import the uh, transfer this from the new material UI uh, version 4. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did leave a like, otherwise don't and uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.